another day another story george soros all you need to know about billionaire and what he said on pm modi the government today slammed billionaire philanthropist george soros over his remarks criticizing prime minister narendra modi and raising questions on hindenburg research's report on industrialist gautam adani's empire the government today slammed billionaire philanthropist george soros over his remarks criticizing prime minister narendra modi and raising questions on hindenburg research's report on industrialist gautam adani's empire here are 10 points on george soros the 92 year old philanthropist is one of the wealthiest men in the world he was born into a prosperous jewish family that left hungary when he was 17 when the nazis arrived according to encyclopedia britannica in 1947, they reached London, where Mr. Soros studied philosophy at the London School of Economics. After his studies, he joined the London merchant bank Singer and Friedlander. In 1956, Mr. Soros moved to New York, where he worked initially as an analyst of European securities, as per Encyclopedia Britannica. Mr. Soros made his mark in the financial world by making bold investment decisions after establishing a hedge fund in 1973. He managed client money from 1969 to 2011. As per Forbes, Mr. Soros shorted the British pound and reportedly made a profit of $1 billion. He became known as the man who broke the Bank of England, the outlet further said. Bloomberg said Mr. Soros has a net worth of $8.5 billion and is the founder of Open Society Foundations, which gives grants to groups and individuals that promote democracy, transparency and freedom of speech. After the end of the Cold War, Mr. Soros established these foundations more than 70 countries. He has also been involved in political activism, and supported the presidential campaigns of Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden. According to Bloomberg, he is also believed to be one of the main protagonists of the Asian financial crisis, which started in Thailand in 1997, leading to the collapse of its currency the baht, and spread to several other countries. South Korea, Indonesia and Thailand were most affected by it. Hong Kong, Laos, Malaysia and the Philippines were also hurt by the slump. Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad accused Mr. Soros of ruining the country's economy with massive currency speculation. Mr. Soros made the comments that have infuriated the government during a speech ahead of the Munich Security Conference. He highlighted the recent Adani Group crisis and said PM Modi has to answer questions from foreign investors and parliament on allegations of fraud and stock manipulation against the billionaires' companies. He also said that the this will significantly weaken Modi's stranglehold on India's federal government and open the door to push for much-needed institutional reforms. I may be naive, but I expect a democratic revival in India, said Mr. Soros. Union Minister Smriti Irani called it an attack on India that would not be tolerated and called upon Indians to unitedly respond to foreign powers who try to intervene in India's democratic processes. She also called the billionaire a designated economic war criminal. The opposition has been targeting the BJP-led government at the center, accusing it of favoritism and crony capitalism. They had even raised the issue during the budget session of parliament demanding a joint parliamentary committee probe. Union Home Minister Amit Shah had said in an interview with news agency NI that there is nothing for the BJP to hide or be afraid of. The Ports to Energy Adani Group, controlled by billionaire Gautam Adani, one of the world's richest people, has seen shares in its seven companies lose billions in market value since the January 24 report by US-based short-seller Hindenburg Research, which accused it of improper use of offshore tax havens and stock manipulation. Mr. Adani has strongly denied the charges, calling it a maliciously mischievous, reputational attack. Why George Soros is bound to lose his dirty war against India? Soros has already lied that India is about to cancel the citizenship of millions of Muslims. He is mistaking a civilizational revival for narrow nationalism and waging a war against an idea which does not exist. In his abiding personal mission to establish open societies across the world, billionaire George Soros has strangely attacked open societies like the US, India, and parts of Europe but has allied with the closed and cloistered ideologies like the far left and Islamism. It is the rich man's ego, his naive and dangerous pursuit of shaping world politics by even steamrolling the will of a people if needed, and his own deep intellectual contradictions and compromises that have caused him to fail again and again. Soros's interest in India is long and rumored to be prodded by pro-Pakistan, 
anti-Russia elements of America's deep state. It is clear from his recent proclamations that the spectacular rise of the nation under Narendra Modi and guided by Hindutva troubles him. In fact, any proud and prosperous nation, from the US to Israel, and from Russia to his own country of origin Hungary, bothers him. The new India clashes with his idea of a stateless, chaotic world in which carrion eaters like him benefit by backing puppet regimes and militias. He has been outlawed in Hungary, Russia, Turkey, Malaysia and other places. India has put his Open Society Foundation on the prior permission list of incoming foreign funds after his hostile 2020 speech in which he pledged $1 billion to affect regime change in nations with rising nationalism like India. Funding and involvement of OSF in anti-CAA and anti-farm laws protests have been reported widely. Salil Shetty, the vice president of OSF India, has walked with Congress Sayan Rahul Gandhi during the recent Bharat Jodo Yatra. Soros wants to overturn the repeated and resounding verdict of Indian democracy by creating chaos from the streets to the stock markets. His idea of open society is fired by the teachings of his mentor, philosopher Karl Popper, a communist who later turned against all totalitarian instincts and fiercely criticized Western philosophical heavyweights from Plato to Hegel and Marx to Freud. But Soros's undoing lies chiefly in his own contradictions. He is a capitalist with a vision of controlled capitalism and philanthropy. But he creates and works through the worst far-left anarchists and even groups accused of terror. His hand is seen in BLM to PFI. He has made Islamism and Communism, two most authoritarian and violent ideologies, allies in his vision to build a more open world. What kind of open society can be built with groups espousing such violent and closed ideologies? Besides, Soros does not understand Bharat. He looks at it from his blinkered notion of the Western nation-state. He is pushing against an idea that does not exist here. The concept of nation was, in fact, Girilal Jan argued, alien to the Hindu temperament and genius. It, nation, was essentially Semitic in character, even if it arose in Western Europe in the 18th century when it had successfully shaken off the church's stranglehold. For, like Christianity and Islam, it too emphasized the exclusion of those who did not belong to the charm circle, territorial, linguistic or ethnic, as much as it emphasized the inclusion of those who fell within the circle, scholar Meenakshi Jain writes in the introduction to her father Girilal Jain's book, The Hindu Phenomenon. By contrast, the essential spirit of Hinduism was inclusivist, and not exclusivist, by definition. Such a spirit must seek to abolish and not build boundaries. That is why he held that the Hindus could not sustain an anti-Muslim feeling except temporarily and, that too, under provocation. Soros has already lied that India is about to cancel the citizenship of millions of Muslims. He is mistaking a civilizational revival for narrow nationalism and waging a war against an idea which does not exist. He is also up against a leadership core like Modi, Amit Shah, Ajit Doval, and S. Jayashankar who do not act under provocation. They have the, stit prigya, or a zero emotion, even intellect approach to crisis and solutions.